right, so in this lesson, instead of focusing on our game character or even our game level, in this lesson, we're going to focus instead on what happens below our game level. If I go ahead and press play scene and I take my character and I jump off the edge, what happens? Well, as it stands, my game character just keeps falling forever into the abyss and, well, nothing happens. In this lesson, what I want to do is add what's called or what I call a fall zone. A fall zone is a three-dimensional box or zone that if you enter this invisible area, you can trigger an event to happen, like the scene can restart, or you can even trigger a different scene to load. Let's go ahead and select our level one root node of our scene, and I'm going to go up and add a new node, so I'll press the little plus button up here. I'm going to be adding into my game level a, if I go under my node tree here, under node 3D, I'm going to be adding another one of these. It's a collision object. It's called an area 3D. If you think back to the early lesson in this course where we made a coin, that was an area 3D. It's basically a zone that can detect if another object enters it really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and add an area 3D. Of course, you can search for it. You might even have it in your recents list here. I do right here. So I'll go ahead and double click to add it. I'll go ahead and rename this area 3D fall zone. All one word is good enough for me. And because this big fall zone area is going to be below my game level, even though I can't see it right now, but if I select that node, I should have my little control gizmos on the screen right now, the little arrows and rotation tools on my screen. I'm just going to move the origin of that fall zone down to below my game level. Basically, we're giving the origin point a place to start, which is appropriate below the game level. What I need to do now is take a look at this warning. If I click on the little warning icon, it says this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 3D. You know what this error means. If I go ahead and press OK and select that node and go up to the plus, I need to give my fall zone a collision shape. 3D, which I have from my recents, or you can search for it, collision shape 3D. There we go. I'll go ahead and double click to add it. This collision shape will have a little warning of its own because when you select the collision shape, you need to give it a shape resource. I'm going to go over to the inspector with it selected and add a box shape 3D. The box shape will be just two by two by two, which is really quite small down here. So I'll zoom in and grab the little pink handles and make this box shape a lot bigger in all three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, you should not, even though you think that maybe you should just make it wide and uh, quite deep, if I grab this pink handle, um, that's not quite enough because you do want your character to make sure that it is detected by this area. And there is a chance that your character might skip over a thin fall zone. So make it nice and tall as well. What you want to do is make sure that it's large enough that no matter what your character does, no matter how they jump off any platform in your game level, it will touch the fall zone as it falls down. And what you can even do is take that collision shape and move it around. You don't need to leave it at the origin of the fall zone or centered on that at all. So I'm going to just take a moment and make this quite a lot bigger like that. Maybe move it over like that and a bit wider on the z-axis as well. I'm kind of happy with that. So the next step is to make this fall zone actually detect when a character is entering it. And to do that, we're going to be using a signal. If I go and select my fall zone, this is identical to my coin. We have a little signal icon here because if I select my coin and go over to the node dock over here, you can see a list of our common signals including body entered. And if a body like my character enters that coin, we want the coin to emit a signal, which means it will run a little piece of code somewhere in our project. In this case, the coin has its own little script. And so if I double click on this handling function, well, it'll jump to the coins code where I have a function here called on body entered. When the coin detects that a body enters it, it emits this signal, which runs this function, which 
just has one line. It says Q free, which means delete this object that this code is on, which is the coin from the game level. That's how it works. So I'll do the same thing except for Q free with the area 3D, my fall zone, back into my game world. I'll select my fall zone. We're not going to put code on the fall zone. This time we're going to make the character's code, Steve's code, handle the fall zone signal. So if I select my fall zone and go over to the node dock and find the signal called body entered, I'll double click on it. I have to now select some object in my scene that has a script on it. And because my fall zone itself doesn't have a script file, I'll just select Steve. And on Steve, it wants to make a function called on fall zone body entered. I like that name. So with Steve selected, I'll press connect. When I do that, here is Steve's code. I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. You can see here that there is a new function that was made for us called func on fall zone body entered with no code, just a pass to temporarily have one line of code in there because you need to have a pass or some actually relevant code. You can double check that the signal is going to work by looking next to the fall zone for a little signal icon right there. And if you select the fall zone and go over to the node dock, you should now see that under body entered that on Steve's code, there is a handling function called on fall zone body entered and there should be a little green icon that matches the green icon next to your handling function that it names right here on steve's code and if you double click on this line it should jump you even if you're not in that code file even if you're in some other code file it should jump you when you double click on this line of code back over to that handling function how do we get now our scene to reload whenever we hit the fall zone when I'm playing my game and the character falls off and enters that fall zone, I want to either go to a whole different level, in other words, a game over screen, which we don't have yet. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to switch scenes in our game, which we could do to a game over screen, but instead we're going to switch scenes back to this same scene to basically reload our game from the beginning, which means that the character will start off in its default position right here. How do we do that? Well, if I go to my fall zones handling method, what I can do is call a method that's built into GD script. I'll zoom in a little bit here and scroll down so you can see what I'm going to type right here. What I'm going to do is call a method called get underscore tree. This is a funny sounding method and essentially what it means is get your whole project, get back up in a hierarchy of all of your projects nodes and all of your project scenes up to the top level of your game project so you can then say hey I want to load a new scene into the active game window. Get tree basically finds the very top of your game project. What we can then do is put a dot right after that and call a method called change scene to file. So if you type in change and then use your arrow key on the autocomplete prompt here, I'll just press enter to autocomplete that method call, change scene to file. And in the parentheses, you need to pass a string with the path to the file that you now want to load. It needs to be a scene file. And if you look at what it's prompting me right now, if I maximize my workspace, you can see it's listing all of my scene files here, including level1.tscn. I could use my down arrow key to select level1.tscn and press enter. It needs to begin with res colon slash slash because that's the name of my project folder. I could just, if I maximize this workspace as much as I can. You could also type it yourself. If you type empty quotation marks, you could go over to the scene file that you want to load, level1.tscn, go up to the path and copy it. Once you have level1.tscn selected, the path includes res colon slash slash, and then you could paste that control V into the quotation marks like that, and it should work. Let's go ahead and see if it does. I'll press control S to say level one. I will press play scene. And now if I jump off the edge and I touch that fall zone, my game level restarts. So that's it. That was a quick one. I'll go ahead and put that code up on the screen once again. 
But that'll be it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.